Jimmy Red. What an awesome heirloom corn. I love this corn. I have hopes that, that we can be able to grow this in the future, but it just didn't pan out this year the way I'd hoped, and that's what we'll talk about. Hey guys, Jay Young with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. Today's episode is sponsored by Regen Ag Labs. Guys, usually I just ramble off. Today's episode is sponsored by Regen Ag Labs. Regen Ag Labs is the ag lab that I trust. But I wanna say something in today's video. Uh, and this isn't them paying me more to say this. I, I wanna say this because Lance is the first person that agreed to sponsor a episode because he believes in what we're doing and he cares about regenerative agriculture. Guys, if you're pulling soil samples and sending them off to an ag lab to have them tested, don't you want to send them to an ag lab that you know has the same heart and vision for regenerative agriculture that you do? If that's the case, you gotta send it to Regen Ag Labs. They didn't pay me extra for that longer spiel. Um, they mean a lot to me as a company and uh, Lance, believing me, means a lot to me as a company and I want you to know what type of person he is. All right, guys. This year has been a funky year. Um, was really, really excited all year long about how our fall crops were going to do because the massive amount of rain that we got uh, most of summer. And then, and the funny thing about that is, is that we've been in a drought so long that I thought we were getting a jack ton of rain. And it turns out right now, we're sitting on our annual precipitation uh, for the year, which is, we're a little over 16 inches. So that's how bad of a drought we've been in the last few years that when we actually got what we average on a regular basis, I thought, oh my gosh, it's so amazing that it never stops raining. And I'm like, oh, that's how much it's usually rains, but it just doesn't seem that way because it hasn't rained hardly at all. So the rain really shut off in August, um, the beginning of the year. We didn't have much uh, moisture at the beginning of the year. Then it really started coming down in May. Um, rain consistently May to June uh, and then or I'm sorry May to July and then in August we got a good rain at the beginning of August and we haven't had much to speak of since then uh, and I think because we've been in a drought for such a long time there's not a lot of subsoil moisture that you know we were just living from rain to rain and so that when that shut off in August it really hurt our yields so if you look at our corn yields across the board uh, our lowest fields have been in the 50s, um, and we had a field that did 90 uh, on our, our dry land. So to give you perspective, this Jimmy Red corn made 20 bushels an acre. So 30 bushels an acre less than our worst corn. Uh, that was primarily because the poor stand that we got on this field uh, when we planted it. So I don't know if, if it was the germination. I know that germination uh, played some role in it. Um, I know that when we, as we planted this field, uh, we did a fish hydrolysate product uh, that we got from Elevate Ag. And so with that fish hydrolysate product, um, we are hoping that that would combat the, the worms. And the idea is, is that there's chitin in this fish hydrolysate and uh, these predatorial insects cannot handle the chitin in their stomach uh, and it kills them. So uh, that was the thought process in using the fish hydrolysate to help out with that. Uh, we did part of the field, the very last pass, dad was running out and said, hey, I need more. I said, no, we'll leave that as a test strip. Uh, that area had even way less population than the rest of it. So I know that we were successful at combating uh, some of the issues with the predatorial insects in our soil uh, with the fish hydrolysate. Um, so I, I don't know how much of it was due to the poor germination of the seed or how much of it was due to the predatorial insects. I just know that there's more challenges, more things that I've got to learn before I can, I have an entire field dedicated to, you know, to Jimmy Red Corn. So 
that's what it was on our dry land. So we grew it on 80 acres, the field that's directly behind me. And then we also grew it on 60 acres of an irrigated circle. So that would be half of our irrigated circle was Jimmy Red Corn. That's how it did with the dry land field. Let's run over to the irrigated circle and I'll talk about that. Here we are at our irrigated circle of where the Jimmy Red Corn uh, was. We cut it about a month ago, maybe even a little longer chopped it for silage. Uh, I did that because I, I thought there was going to be a high uh, sugar content, higher protein content in the Jimmy Red corn. Um, when we got our, our test back, uh, didn't really see that much of a difference in it and it was lower in starch. So not really excited about the results that we're chopping this for silage, especially since we pulled 12 tons an acre off of this, this circle, which was about a third or two thirds um or sorry it was a third less uh than what our silage was last year um that we did with you know a conventional gmo corn so really really disappointed in how it went basically i think it was the same thing just poor stand uh, on this particular field we didn't even use the chitin we used a insecticide because dad wanted you know <laughs> dad thought that the whole idea of the chitin and I, explaining how the chitin works, um, he thought that was crazy. So he was like, we can, we're can we gonna do most of this field with a insecticide. Well, the insecticide didn't really do, or do any better. Uh, we left a path through the field um, to cut of the Jimmy Red corn so that we could see what the actual yield was, uh, bushels per acre, and this made 50 bushels an acre. Um, you know, so when you have an irrigated circle out here, you want, to hit 200 bushels of corn to 250 bushels of corn. So to get 50 bushels an acre off of your Jimmy Red corn, really, really disappointing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that I could have I could have done better. Um, you know, like I should have been a little bit more diligent on, on sourcing, you know, Jimmy Red corn. You know, I, I bought it in bulk um, thinking, you know, that the particular where I was buying it from, it was more focused on using this corn seed uh, for a uh, cover crop uh, seed. And so, you know, I, I probably should have done a better job of making sure that the germination was a little better. Uh, that being said, the germination test that they got was 82%. Um, it would seem like there's another variable in there since our yields are even less than that. And we try to make up for that by boosting the population uh, about 25% higher than um, what we would normally plant on our, you know, irrigated and on our dry land. So I, I don't want to blame the seed company that I, I purchased that Jimmy Red from, um, you know, or the company that sold me the the chitin. You know, I think that the, the chitin actually worked, um, you know, from where we did that test strip. It had some positive and benefit effect because we did have a higher population. Uh, but overall, I got to figure out uh, how to make Jimmy Red work on a smaller scale. So what we're planning on doing, if we plan it again, is we'll just do one pass through the field um, and keep doing it that way uh, and testing it out and, and trying to figure out how to get the population um, to, to be thicker um, of, of the plants per acre so that we, we can successfully grow it. And that's if we want to do it again. So currently, when we're planting our corn and our milo, uh, it's already a three to four week process of getting everything planted um, there in May into the beginning of, of June. And it's a really, really stressful time. So adding the stress of, of planting 12 rows, cleaning out our planter, getting the, the, the corn planted, you know, that's not something that really appeals to my dad. Um, doing the research and trying to figure out what I did wrong and try different options uh, for next year, also not something that I'm overly excited about right now because currently with the number of projects I have, I have so many irons in the fire uh, that you know going after and trying to figure out how to make Jimmy Red uh, Corn work is probably down here on my list of things that I want to do at the top of the list would be continue to prove our cattle genetics and promoting our our brand and how our cattle are doing 
Next would be some of the other things that we're doing with interceding cover crops and getting better at some of the stuff that we're already doing. The other thing is, is I love the YouTube channel and communicating with you guys things that we're doing and I think I could be a lot better at cinema photography and some of the things I'm doing on YouTube. And so when you have so many things, so many irons in the fire, um, and you're like me and you're realizing, I feel like I could be better at these three things if I figure out something to cut out. And really, there's probably more than one or two things that I need to cut out so I can be better at the handful of things at the top that I wanna to try to accomplish. That is actually probably a good lesson for all of us. You know, I go to these conferences and there's so many things I wanna try. Um, you know, I, I brought up earlier in a video about doing Kernza and we didn't even, you know, try Kernza this year. When you go to a conference or you watch YouTube videos, you get all these ideas and you get really excited, or at least a lot of us in regenerative agriculture do because um, because so few people are doing regenerative agriculture. And so if, if that's you and you, you're you like me and you're, you're a pioneer, you wanna try things, you want an adventure, you're probably wanting to try a, a ton of stuff. And really it's not realistic for you to try to do everything that is on your heart to do. Um, and so for me, that's been the biggest, hardest pill to swallow this year is realizing that I could be better at the top, you know, handful of things that are really important to me if I just chose some of the things that I need to let go of. And that's been really tough for me is recognizing I can't do everything I desire to do. And realistically, if I want to be better at the things that are most important to me, I've got to suck it up and decide which things I need to cut out of my life and cut them out of my life, move on and be greater at the top handful of things that really speak to my heart that I want to be good at. So I hope that encourages you guys, you know, if you're having thoughts about things in your life that like it feels like things are kind of getting out of control uh, because you're just doing too many things, have the courage to step up, make a list of what things are the most important to you and cut out the things that you probably need to cut out so that you can be more successful at the things that mean the most to you. Up our discussion on Jimmy Redcorn, uh, like I said, possibly, probably not doing any more Jimmy Red in the future, but I don't wanna close the door on it altogether. Wh who knows? Um, for the next few weeks, uh, planning on all the videos of Milo, uh, dryland corn, irrigated corn, gonna talk about how interseeding cover crops into our corn in more detail went and in our Milo. Um, that's definitely something we're gonna do in the future. Um, we'll talk about that and, and the why. We'll get into our how our cattle are doing. I did a video earlier in the year of what our plan was for grazing throughout the year. So I'll kind of do an overlapping video and talk about what the plan was, what actually happened and all that cool stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching the channel. You guys mean the world to me. I appreciate you. This is Jay Young, out.